So in Thiruvannamalai, somebody said, fireworks. <laughs> and that evening there was some fireworks, somebody was getting married. <laughs> so fireworks also came. But notice how the mind will try to sell you a story that some sensation or some perception must be there. Only then you must be free. You cannot be God, you cannot be consciousness until that one type of sensation or perception is there. How plausible is this story? That for the existence of God there must be a certain type of quality of sensation. The other thing that can happen is that as we are talking, we might be having a three-sided conversation. I am talking all this is, then you are giving it to the mind, the mind saying, no, but, but actually, all this is fine, easier said than done. But no. <laughs> then you find that, and then you are listening to what I have as a counter to that. And you're waiting to see what the mind has accounted to that. If that is happening, then leave all this. Stay with your own insight about what you are finding for yourself. Use the words in satsang as pointers. So, for example, when I say you have no boundary. Don't just pick up the concept, oh, I have no boundary. The mind will say, but, 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 when you are arguing with your mother yesterday, you seem to have a boundary. <laughs> Don't make it a conceptual idea. Check. Where is my boundary? Do you have a boundary? As you check, you experience some sensations. The mind will come and say, See, this is your boundary. You are contained in these sensations. These define your boundary. Explore the validity of these words. Are these sensations containing me? Or do I contain them? Find out what is your true position. I know that these kind of questions can shake up all that you have believed about yourself. And that is why they are important. You see. 